Thank you for visiting Annie Electronics. The PN junction diode was discussed in our previous video, both in forward and reverse bias, and its characteristics. Our discussion in this episode will cover what a rectifier is and why a rectifier or AC to DC converter is needed. Every electronic manufacturer provides a required voltage and current specification for a device to function properly. If we examine the specifications closely, we find that the specified voltage is too low compared to the power line voltage and it is not alternating. Therefore, the voltage of the power line should be stepped down, adjusted with the operational voltage for the same electronic device, and converted into a constant DC voltage. A transformer is a special electrical device that can step down the power line voltage. Let's look at a few important points very carefully. Upon stepping down the power line voltage, an electronic circuit is required that converts the AC voltage into DC, filters the DC part from AC, and regulates the output DC voltage. Rectifiers are the first component in this circuit that converts AC to DC voltage. Let's begin by understanding the rectifier circuit first. In this episode, we will discuss half-wave, full-wave, and full-wave bridge rectifiers. All we need is a diode for the half-wave rectifier. Refer back to the forward bias characteristics of junction diodes. The diode will begin conducting when the source voltage crosses its barrier potential. Substitute an AC source for the DC source, which produces a sinusoidal voltage. Sinusoidal voltage consists of positive and negative cycles. While the positive half cycle appears from the source, the diode will be in forward bias and conduct. While a negative half cycle is occurring, the diode will become reverse biased and stop conducting or clip off the negative half cycles. In other words, the diode acts as a closed switch while the positive half cycle is present. The diode functions as an open switch in the time period of the negative half cycle. Now we can clearly understand the switch concept associated with diodes. The DC voltage in output is called pulsating DC voltage. A DC voltage of this type that increases to maximum levels during the positive half cycle and then falls back to zero and remains zero during the negative half cycle time period. This is why it is not a constant DC voltage that we need. However, we have a solution and we will discuss this further. The corresponding circuit represents a positive half wave rectifier. As a homework assignment, draw a circuit that gives you a negative half-wave rectifier. Let us now calculate the DC value of the output voltage. Let us assume that VP in is the peak or maximum value of the input source voltage and that VP out is the same for the output voltage. For an ideal diode, VP in is equal to VP out. In reality, however, we have to consider the barrier potential of the diode. When the source voltage crosses the barrier potential, the diode starts conducting. This means that a potential drop equal to the barrier potential will be included in the calculation. For silicon-made diodes, the barrier potential is approximately 0.7 volts. So the VP out is equal to VP in minus 0.7 volts. It's a little tricky to come up with an equation for the average DC voltage of the output. To do this, we need to figure out the average over one cycle. And the equation is VDC equals VP divided by pi. For the derivation of equation, we need to understand what pi is. And Wikipedia has a beautiful explanation of pi, which you can read. The link is provided in the description below. Our next topic is full wave rectifier. We will talk about the center tapped full wave rectifier and the bridge rectifier. There are two types of windings in a transformer, primary and secondary. As a way to divide the secondary AC voltage into two equal and opposite directions, an additional wire is connected to the center of the secondary winding, also known as a center tap transformer. The full wave rectifier is equivalent to two half wave rectifiers. Let's apply an AC voltage to the transformer's input. When the AC input voltage is positive, point A is at positive potential, and point B is at negative potential with respect to center tap point C. 
The diode D will conduct since it will be in forward bias mode, and the diode DB will be in reverse bias mode and not conduct. During the negative half cycle of the AC input voltage, the diode DB will begin conducting and produce a positive output voltage. The reason for this is that, based on the center tap point C, point A will be at a negative potential and point B will be at a positive potential. Consequently, diode DB will be in forward bias and will conduct, while diode DA will not conduct because it will be in reverse bias. We can see that for both the positive and negative input cycles, the output voltage has the same polarity. Nevertheless, the output DC voltage is not constant and it is pulsating. If you think a little harder, the center-tapped full-wave rectifier will work with two diodes only if a center-tapped transformer is available. You might notice that one of the outputs for the center-tapped full-wave rectifier is always grounded, so we can't use it in a circuit that demands the floating output terminal. Full-wave bridge rectifiers can address the problem as it improves the transformer utilization factor. This means that even if the transformer is not center-tapped, the rectifier will operate. A full-wave bridge rectifier consists of four diodes. We can divide the circuit into two sections to better understand its operation. Let's apply an AC voltage to the input. The point 1 will be at positive potential and point 2 at negative potential whenever the positive half cycle appears. Therefore, diodes DB and DC will be in forward bias and start conducting. The diodes BD and DA will be in reverse bias mode and not conduct. During the negative half cycle, point 2 will always have a positive potential, while point 1 will have a negative potential. As a result, diode D and D A will be in forward bias and will begin to conduct. A reverse bias will result in DB and DC and will not conduct. The peak DC voltage will be VP out equal to VP in minus 1.4 volts for silicon made diode. And the average output DC voltage VDC equal to 2 VP divided by pi. This output DC voltage is also not constant and is pulsating. Our next episode will discuss how to filter out DC parts and the mathematics and the physics behind them. Follow us on other social media channels if you would like to receive notifications. You can leave your questions and suggestions in the comment section of the video. We'll be greatly motivated if you like the video. Moreover, you will receive notifications each time a new video is released by subscribing to the channel. Thank you very much.